Hi, I'm Mike with the Ring Brothers, here to show you how to clear carbon. I get a lot of calls from people on what's the process of when they get either our carbon part or somebody else's carbon part. There's still probably some release agent on your part. So the first thing we want to do is wipe it off really well with the acetone. Now, the key with carbon is you don't want to sand it too much at this process because if you sand through the weave, you can um, distort the weave and it's, it's there forever. You pretty much ruin the part. So I always just start out with 320. Basically what I'm going to do, and you could put it you know, by hand or you could um, put it on a sponge or a soft block or whatever. But you'll see while you're sanding it, the shininess will go away. So then I'm actually going to scotch bright with the acetone. I'm going to just... This is the most important part of clearing carbon. We have to get all that dust off. But see all this black? If I just did this once, once I cleared it, you don't really notice it now, you'd see streaks. So what I'm gonna do now is change out my gloves and wipe it off one more time. You can see I'm not getting anything anymore. That's what we want. We got it wiped off, we're ready to add some clear to it. I found that Duratec, the Duratec with a UV protectant, to start really fills the pores a lot better than just a regular automotive clear. But you can use automotive clear, but I like to start with at least uh, Duratec. Well, right now we're gonna mix up the Duratec. Um, use it on the scale because it's by volume, so it's 2% by volume. If you're using the PPS cups by 3M, make sure you put the liner in. I'm gonna put it on pretty heavy, so I'll probably need to go to about 400. No big deal. So there's my 400. And uh, like I said, it's 2% 2, 2 so I'll do 8 of the hardener. I do, like I said, I do like to use my AccuSpray 3M gun with a 2.0 tip. I like to cut it a little bit with acetone and I just really just a splash in there. And that's all I really need, just a little bit to cut it a little bit. It seems to spray a little better and not kick as quick. So we don't want it to kick too quick on us when we're spraying it. So we'll put the lid on it and uh, meet you in the booth. Okay, now we got it in again earlier. We had wiped it all off and we're ready to spray the Duratec on it. But you know, it's like, paint job on your car right here is the most important and we want it we got it wiped off we got it clean but we don't want to have any dirt in it as little as we can it's not so much the dirt that we're worried about as anything like lint from the towel a blue speck of the towel or anything that's got color to it it'll show up once it's cleared so just like you would do you would tack this thing off really well and uh, then we're going to be ready for Duratec I put three coats on, but you can see on the first coat how much that it really pinholed and looked like big fish eyes. And uh, that's pretty normal. So I actually go wet to wet to wet really quick with the three. When it's cloudy, that's okay. Those will go away. What those are is actually really small air bubbles. Where I fingered in a couple of the bigger pinholes that weren't covering, that's okay because we're going to block it with a hard block, just like you would if you're sanding your car out. You want to have it flat tape off the edges. We'll go over that and I'll show you what, you what I mean by that, but it's okay to have runs or you know drips. I tend to go around, if I got a real heavy spot, I'll just wipe it off with my finger or push in an area where there's a pinhole that looks pretty deep yet. I'm gonna let the cloudiness leave it and uh, come back, throw the bake on, and then I'll show you what we do from here. We just got it out of the booth. And anytime you get this Duratec once it's out of the booth, even if it's sad or day or whatever, but I did bake it, um, it's tacky. Use acetone and it takes the, the stickiness off it, which doesn't gum up your paper as quick. So basically I'm gonna kind of hold my stand and just sand, sand it out. I just do it in 180, then I'll go to 320. And believe it or not, you can just clear over the 320 scratch. I'm just wiping it off with acetone so my tape will stick. So what I'm gonna do 
is uh, tape off the straight edge and then sand back to the tape. And uh, that'll, that'll give me a nice crease down the middle. This powder is almost like a guide coat too, because you can see the 180 scratch go away while you're doing it. If you just have to get done sanding it and you want to paint this edge, you could mask this off, base you know any part, a stripe on it or whatever, peel your tape off and clear over the whole thing and then you have a stripe that's buried in your clear. So you can base right over this Duratec as if it is primer. I can peel the tape off. Again, I'll wipe it off with acetone. But now I'm just, I see some shiny areas. I'm just gonna hit real good. The key now again is with the acetone. Since we are going to clear again, we wanna make sure that it is super, super clean. Just keep wiping it off. And when you do that, the acetone actually eats a little bit. And if there's a small scratch, if you just wipe over it a little bit with the acetone, it'll actually kind of uh, make the scratch less apparent if it worries you. But really, a 320 scratch, be no problem covering it.